Hello friends, this is Sanjada from New Delhi, India. I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel, Legally Determined. Uh, today we would discuss the concept of the doctrine of election, section 35 of the Transfer Property Act 1882. The doctrine of election is of universal application and extends to all deeds and every species of property. Let's understand section 35 of the Transfer Property Act 1882 with the help of an illustration at the outset. Illustration A is the owner of a property X and B is the owner of the property Y. C is the son of A and a friend of B. A professes to transfer property X to B and property Y to C. Here B has to elect to confirm the transfer in his favor or reject it. If B confirms it, B would accept property X, but B would have to forego property Y in favor of C. If B rejects the transfer, B has to do it in totality. B has to accept either the deed and its contents in totality or reject it in totality. First, the principle underlying the doctrine of election. As the basic presumption under the law is that the transferor intended to give effect to each and every part of the deed that he executes. The transfer is not permitted to approbate and reprobate at the same time. Benefit and burden must coexist. The transferor transfers two properties, one that he owns to the transferee and the second property belonging to the transferee that the transfer professes to transfer in the same transaction. The second property that transferor transfers without the consent of the owner, owner here means transferee in favor of a third party. The validation of both these transfers has to be made by the transferee. The consent of the transferee is to be obtained after the transferor has transferred his property without seeking it in the first place. Yet at the same time, if the transferee accepts the transfer in his favor, he is not permitted to reject the second transfer in favor of the third party on the ground that his consent was not obtained or he does not want to go ahead with that transfer. Second, knowledge on part of the transferor is immaterial. The rule applies whether the transferor does or does not believe that what he professes to transfer is not his own. The transferor may genuinely believe that the transferor is authorized to execute what the trans transferor is transferring. Or the transferor may deliberately transfer property belonging to another while giving him a benefit qua executing another transfer in transferee's favor. The transferor may be ignorant of the principle of election here, irrespective of the knowledge on the part of the transfer, the transferee must elect, uh, exercise election to confirm or reject both the transfers. Third, the transferee can be permitted to elect only when he has a proprietary interest in the property that has been transferred by the transfer in favor of a third party. Fourth, the two transfers must be out must be of the same transaction. The transfer is not permitted to exercise the election if the, two, if the two transfers are independent of each other and are not part of the same transaction. Illustration X executes a transfer of his son's property in favor of his second wife. Upon his son's protest, A executes another deed after a week by which A gives his land to his son. Here, the validity of the first transfer does not depend on the doctrine of election. The son here can take the benefit under the second transfer and at the same time refuse to go ahead with the first one as both transfers are separate and are not part of the same transaction but are independent of each other. Fifth, there must be direct benefit to the transferee. A person who takes no benefit directly under a transaction, but derives a benefit under it indirectly need not elect. Illustration. A gives a house X to B for life and after his demise to B's son C absolutely. 
A subsequently makes a will by which A gives the house X to C and another property to B. Shortly thereafter, A dies and then B dies without making the election to either elect to, to either confirm or reject the benefit under the bequest. B's son C would now take the house X as per the original transfer executed by A and would take the land Y under intestacy on the demise of his father B as C is an indirect beneficiary C would not be required to put to election. Sixth, transfer must have personal competence to make the disposition. In the case of Hirley versus Green Park, 1 West Sand 298, Re Anderson 1905, 1905 2CH70. In order to raise a case of election, the transfer must have personal competence to make the attempted disposition as the doctrine is founded upon the disposing disposition which supposes such competency. Seven, a person in one capacity takes a benefit under the transaction, may in another capacity descend from it. Section 35 of the Transfer Property Act 1882, election when necessary. When a person professes to transfer property which he has no right to transfer and as part of the same transaction, please uh, have a look-see what I am going to say. The same transaction and not the same instrument. To be the same transaction, the transaction need not necessarily, been, uh, necessarily be under the document only confers any benefit on the owner or transfer of the property. Such owner, uh, namely transferee, must elect either to confirm such transfer or to descend from it. And in the latter case, he shall relinquish the benefit so conferred and the benefit so relinquished shall revert to the transferor or his representative as if it had not been disposed of. Subject nevertheless. When the transfer is gratuitous and the transfer has before the election died or otherwise become incapable of making a fresh transfer and in all cases where the transfer is for consideration to the charge of making good to the disappointed transferee, namely third party, the amount or value of the property attempted to be transferred to him, namely third party. Illustration. The farm of Sultanpur is the property of C. C here is transferring and worth rupees 800. A. Here A is transferred by an instrument of gift professes to transfer it to third party B. Giving by the same instrument rupees 1000 to C. C here is transferring. C transferring elects to retain the form. C transferring forfeits the gift of rupees 1000. In the same case, A dies before the election. His representative must, uh, out of rupees 1000, pay rupees 800 to B, third party. Distinction between English and Indian law. In England, the refractory donee, namely transferee, who descends from the transfer, does not forfeit the benefit under the transfer, but takes the benefit subject to A, charged to compensate the disappointed donee, third party. And the benefit would not revert to the transfer. This is so because the doctrine in England rests on compensation and not on forfeiture. While the doctrine in India rests on forfeiture, and in India, the disappointed transferee, third party, looks to the transferor to compensate him. Yeah, him means third party. By a charge on the property that reverts to him. Him means transfer under section 35 of the Transfer Property Act 1882. But as provided by the succeeding words of the paragraph, there is an occasion for a charge. A. If the transfer is gratuitous and the transfer has before the election died or otherwise become incapable of making a fresh transfer and B. In all cases where the transfer is for consideration of making good to the disappointed transferee third party the amount or value of the property attempted to be transferred to the disappointed transferee, namely third party. 
yet there is no occasion for a charge if the transfer survives when the transfer is gratuitous for it is open to the transferor to make a substituted gift acceptance of the benefit by the person on whom it is conferred constitutes an election by him to confirm the transfer if he is aware of his duty to elect and of those circumstances which would influence the judgment of a reasonable man in making an election or if he waives inquiry into the circumstances such knowledge or waiver shall in the absence of evidence to the contrary be presumed if the person on whom on whom the benefit has been conferred has enjoyed it for 2 years without any act to express dissent such knowledge or waiver may be inferred from any act of his which renders it which renders it impossible to place the person interested in the property profess to be transferred in the same condition as if such act had not been done illustration a transferor transfer transfers to b third party an estate to which c transferee is entitled and as, and as part of the same transaction gives c transferee a coal mine c transferee takes possession of the mine and exhausts it C transferee has thereby confirmed the transfer of the estate to B third party. If the transferee does not within one year after the date of the transfer signify to the transferor or his representatives his intention to confirm or to dissent from the transfer, the transfer or the or his representative after the expiration of that period require him transferee to make his election. And if the transferee does not comply with such requisition within a reasonable time. after the transferee has received it the transferee shall be deemed to have elected to confirm the transfer in case of disability namely minority or lunacy the election shall be postponed until the disability ceases or until the election is or until the election is made by some competent authority when a transferee accepts the benefit with full knowledge of the circumstances the election made by him is final and the transferee cannot revoke it subsequently if the election is made without any or incomplete of the full circumstances it can be revoked by the representatives of the party however it must be shown that the transferee that he had no actual or constructive knowledge of the full situation if there was a duty cast on the transferee as a reasonable man to inquire into the circumstances and the transferee does not inquire constructive notice would be imputed on the transferee and it will be presumed that the transferee knew the full circumstances in the case of sadiq hussain versus hashim ali 1916 43 ia 212 the court held that unless a pradhan ashin woman has been fully informed about the circumstances and the consequences of election any election made by her will not be irrevocable application of the doctrine of election to mohandans in applicability of the doctrine of election first the doctrine of election has no application to cases where election is impossible so in the case of a foreign heir if the lex situs which means law of the place where the property is situated makes it impossible for him to carry out the provision of the will there is no case for election second is effect of mistake the doctrine of election presupposes a conscientious and deliberate exercise of right it can have no application if the parties act under a mutual mistake regarding a law applicable to them if under a mutual mistake one party suffers a detriment and the other derives a benefit which would not have happened but for the mistake the latter cannot subsequently claim to dispel the mistake and claim a benefit thereby unless he is prepared to surrender the benefit he has already obtained the common law doctrine prohibiting approbation and reprobation is a facet of the law of estoppel and well established in our jurisprudence also the doctrine of election was discussed by lord blackburn in the decision of the house of lords in benjamin scarf versus alfred george jardine 1881 82 seven appeal cases 3 4 
where in the learned lord formulated a party in his own mind has thought that he would choose one of two remedies even though he has written it down on a memorandum or has indicated it in some other way that alone will not bind him but so soon as he has not only determined to follow one of his remedies but has communicated it to the other side in such a way as to lead the opposite party to believe that he has made the choice that choice he has completed his selection and he and can go to and can go no further and whether he intended it or not if he has done as if he has done an unequivocal act the effect of his having done that unequivocal act to the knowledge of the persons concerned is an election in tinker versus helder 1849 for exact x e x c h 187 park b stated that where a party had received a benefit under an order it could not claim that it was valid for one purpose and invalid for another c page 190 in clo versus london and north western rail company 1861 273 all england reporter reprint 646 the court referred to communist digest where wherein it has been stated if a man once determines his election it shall be determined forever in this sad case the question was whether in a contract of fraud whether the person on whom the fraud was practiced had elected to avoid the contract or not the court held that as long as such party made no election retained the right to determine it either way subject to the fact that an incorrect in innocent third party must not have acquired an interest in the property while the former party is deliberating if a third party has acquired such an interest the party who was deliberating will lose its right to rescind the contract once such party makes its election it is bound to its election forever see page 652 In Harrison versus Wells, 1966, 3, All England Reporter, page number 524, Salmon uh, L. J. in the Court of Appeal observed that the rule of estoppel was founded on the well-known principle that one cannot approbate and reprobate. The doctrine was further explained by Lord Justice Salmon by holding. it is founded also on a, on this consideration that it would be unjust to allow the man who has taken full advantage of a lease to come forward and seek to evade his obligations under the lease by denying that the purported landlord was the landlord c page 530 in cook hong versus leong chiong wang mines limited 1964 appeal cases 993 the privy council held that a litigant may be shown to have acted positively in the face of the court making an election and procuring from it an order affecting others apart from himself in such circumstances the court has no option but to hold him to his conduct and refuse to start again on the basis that he has abandoned c page 1018 जस्टिस आशुतोष मुखर्जी स्पीकिंग फॉर द डिवीजन बेंच ऑफ कैलकाटा हाई कोर्ट इन विजेंद्र नारायण रॉय वर्सेस जॉक्स चंद्रा डी ऑल इंडिया रिपोर्टर 1924 कैलकाटा पेज नंबर 600 हेल्ड दैट इट इज एन एलिमेंटरी रूल दैट ए पार्टी लिटिगेंट कैन नॉट बी परमिटेड टू अज्यूम इन इनकंसिस्टेंट पोजीशंस इन कोर्ट टू प्ले फास्ट एंड लूज टू ब्लो हॉट एंड कोल्ड to approbate and reprobate to the detriment of his opponent this wholesome doctrine the learned judge had applies not only to successive stages of the same suit but also to another suit then the one in which the position was taken up provided the second suit grows out of the judgment in the first
the court has also applied the doctrine of election in c bipa thuma and other sources vs kadam boli thaya and other stand in 64 volume number 5 supreme court reporter 836 page number wherein the court relied on maitland as saying that you accepts a benefit under a deed or will or other instrument must adopt the whole contents of that instrument must confirm to all its provisions and renounce all rights that are inconsistent with it maitland's lectures on equity lecture 18 this court also took note of the principles stated in white and tudor's leading case in equity volume 18th edition and at page number 444 wherein it is stated election is the obligation imposed upon a party by courts of equity to choose between two inconsistent or alternative rights or claims in cases where there is clear intention of the person from whom he derives one that he should not enjoy both that he accepts a benefit under a deed or will must adopt the whole contents of the instrument in masses new bihar biri leaves company and others versus state of bihar and others 1981 Volume number one, Supreme Court cases, page number five hundred thirty-seven. This court observed that it is a fundamental principle of general application that if a person of his own accord, accord accepts a contract on certain terms and works out the contract, he cannot be allowed to adhere to and abide by some of the terms of the contract, which proved advantageous to him and repudiate the other terms of the same contract. Which might be disadvantages to him. The maxim "quae approbat non approbat" one who approbates cannot reprobate applies in our laws too. All the above mentioned cases have been cited by the Supreme Court of India in Mumbai International Airport Private Limited versus Masters Golden Chariot Airport and another on 22nd September 2010. So I have maintained a trade-off between the lucidity. of the doctrine of election and uh, legalese and i would like to thank mr ankush who has made an effort to wrap up this video and uh, do please do like share and comment my channel and i thank you one and all break a leg thank you very much